Hey everyone, now welcome back to my channel. So I decided to grab the new Urban Decay Wild Greens palette. So I thought I would film myself using it for the first time and let you guys know what I think. I did swatch this and I will include some swatches for you in this video in just a second. But I was just really curious about this. I wanted to see what the formula was like. It's something a little bit different from Urban Decay. And the last few Urban Decay palettes that I've tried have been naked palettes for the most part. So this has a little bit more of like a naked palette color story, but I wanted to see if the formula was the same or different. So I thought I would test it out on camera. I normally try to do a couple of different looks with the palette before I film a review video, but we're actually heading out of town to visit Brady's family in just a few days. There is a big snowstorm coming through, so I'm not sure if our travel plans are going to get changed. So I just thought I would film this video today and upload it for you guys, but I'll come back and share my final thoughts once I use it a little bit more. So here's a closer look at the packaging. I have to say this palette as a whole is definitely very slim really sleek I don't know why but when I saw the initial promo photos I just thought it was going to be really big and bulky and I think it's because of the way the palette opens up but it's not it's definitely a small sleek thin palette which I appreciate the flaps actually go right around the back and as you're holding it and you're I assume as I'm going to be doing my makeup, it will just be easy to hold because it is so lightweight and thin. I will say as you close them, you just have to make sure to kind of push the palette together because as I was playing around with it, I noticed that if I didn't fully close the flaps, there were some spaces where the eyeshadows were kind of showing through. But overall, I really like the design. I think the color is pretty. The shadows themselves look a little bit different than I thought they were going to as well. I think it looks like a really pretty palette in person and I could definitely see this being a hit for Urban Decay as long as the quality matches up. Now I did swatch it and the shadows felt really smooth, really creamy, and they look pretty swatched. A lot of the shimmers are a little bit softer and I feel like they will make good topper shadows on top of a more intense shadow, but I think they would also give just like a pretty wash of color if you don't want something too intense. The matte shadows don't go super deep, but there is a shade called Kickback, which feels like it can be built up. So I am going to use it in today's video so we can see. I'm definitely going to focus on more of a green look today because I feel like that is the theme of the palette. So overall, I think it is a nice color story. I'm excited to try it and see how it works. By the way, if you guys are interested in this palette, I got mine at Ulta Beauty. It's available in stores and online, or you can get it from the Urban Decay website. It's $44. It's coming later to Sephora, but I'll put all of the information in the description box below if you guys want to check it out. So I just applied a little bit of the Urban Decay Primer Potion, and then I just set everything with an eyeshadow. I'm going to start with the shade Earthside, which is a neutral, and I'm just going to apply this as a transition. This is a pretty light, soft shadow, so I don't think this one is going to be built up or be able to be built up to be too intense. I like that it's a little bit cooler toned. I think you do get some nice cooler toned neutrals and then a couple of warm toned neutrals as well. I don't know that I would wear a lot of warm tones with the greens in here, but I think you could use them on their own, or if you are a fan of mixing warm and cool shades, that would be pretty too. Some of you guys told me in the comments of my Purchase or Pass video, there are some reviews up on YouTube, and I didn't watch them yet, just because if I know I'm going to try a palette, I try not to watch too many reviews, just so I can kind of form my own opinions on it. But reviews are obviously helpful if you're trying to decide if you want to try a palette. But because I decided to pick it up, I haven't watched them yet, so I am curious to hear what other people think. Okay, I'm going to do everything on this eye on camera, this eye off camera just to save a little bit of time, so I'll be right back. Okay, that shade blends out really easily. It's definitely not going to be one of the more pigmented shades in the palette. I did build it up quite a bit, and this is about as intense as I can get it to look. So it is definitely going to be a softer shadow. So next I'm going to go in with the shade Kale, which is kind of like a light to medium toned green. And again, I'm just going to blend this right into the crease to add some color. Okay, I didn't want to add too much to my brush just in case it was a super intense green, but it's not. It definitely feels like a buildable shadow, so we'll see if we can build this one up a little bit. These matte shadows are definitely powdery as you dip your brush into the pan. It is going to kick up a lot of eyeshadow, but because it is more powdery, it's also going to blend out easily on the eye. It does feel like Urban Decay's matte formula that I've gotten in some of the recent Naked palettes. But I do feel like if you want intense color, you're either going to have to pack it on or really layer it up. Again, with the shade, very blendable, but lacking a good amount of pigment. I think it looks pretty on the eyes. It's just not going to be super intense. Now I am going to go in with this dark brown shade and we're going to pack this on the outer corner. So we'll see if that makes a difference. I think if you really layer these up, you'll probably get better color payoff. This is a really soft, silky shadow, so I don't know that it's really going to build that well in the outer corner. Again, this might be better if you just kind of 
blend it out and build it up that way but I feel like it's going to be the same case as the other two it's going to end up being like a, a wash of color rather than anything too intense so let's try just kind of blending it out with a blending brush first of all let me sweep that fallout away these matte shadows are super soft but super powdery like I've always said this I don't mind powderiness because it usually means blendability but every time I dip my brush in it just makes such a mess let me actually just film it with my phone because it's a little bit of like an Anastasia Beverly Hills subculture situation over here. Ironically, the shadow is called Kickback, but I just like dip my brush in. There's just so much powderiness with this one. I want to love this palette. I feel like I'm constantly rooting for Urban Decay, but I just don't know that I will. I think I'll stop here with this shadow. I mean, it added a little bit of depth. You can definitely see that this is darker. It's a little more patchy. Than the other two the other two blended out so easily i might just go over that with the transition color but let me do the same thing on the other eye i'm just going to go back over with a little bit of that green shadow i feel like that deeper brown shadow is just it's super powdery like it just makes a mess on the eyes and in the palette there are just so so many good neutral shadows out there that i'm not a fan of that one i'm going to see if the shimmer shadows can redeem this palette so i'm going to start with the shade stash this is just a deeper green because the lighter shades, when I swatched them, they kind of felt like they were going to be better as topper shadows. I just feel like they need a darker base underneath. So I'm going to start with this one. Honestly, this shadow just feels pretty underwhelming. It's like a soft satin shadow. It's pretty patchy on the eyes. I just feel like I can't get it to apply evenly to the eye. It's not even that it has to be super intense. Like it's definitely more of like a soft satin. It looks pretty. It just, it is a little bit lackluster. I had to layer that up a little bit. I feel like that's kind of like a pretty softer smoky eye. I would just maybe touch up the edges a little bit, but it looks nice. I mean, it, it kind of came together. You know, you can kind of tell the difference between good shimmers that are softer and bad shimmers that just don't apply evenly. And this kind of feels like one of the bad ones. It's not the end of the world because I just wanted to lay down a darker base before I went in with one of the lighter shadows all over the lid. So I think I'm going to take the shade twist and like I said when I swatched this this just kind of felt like it was supposed to be a topper shadow so if you were to use this on its own you're probably just going to get a very sheer wash of color which honestly that could be really pretty too but look at the difference like this really intensifies that darker shadow so I think this shadow is going to save the look right here this is what I wanted a lot of the shades in the oops Sorry, that might not have been in focus. This is what I wanted a lot of the shades in the Naked Cyber to do. And some of them definitely intensify the look. But some of them are a little bit more dry. This is really smooth, really creamy. This color is so good. I feel like there is such a difference between this eye and this eye. I mean, this one's a little bit more smoky, a little bit more subtle. But I love the way that this just pops on top of the darker shadow. So I'm just going to apply it to the other eye. So there is definitely fallout with that shimmer shadow. I'm going to have to clean that up in a few seconds. If you wet your brush, you won't experience as much fallout. I always just like to use my fingers with shimmers to see how intense I can get them. But if you wet your brush with that, it could probably be even more vibrant. For me, that's probably enough. But I love the way that layered on top. That looks so nice. For the lower lash line, I'm just going to start with the shade Kale and just blend that out to add a pop of green. I almost wish instead of that dark brown that they had put in like a really deep matte green. I think that would have been a nice way to kind of round out the palette too. But the shade Kale is pretty. I really thought I had an Urban Decay eyeliner in the shade Stash, but I can't find it. So either I misplaced it or that doesn't exist. If it did, I felt like that would have gone really well with this. So I just found this NYX eyeliner in the shade Golden Olive. I'm just going to apply this in my waterline. I feel like this color just goes with the look really well. And these eyeliners are really comparable to the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Eye Pencils. I am just going to take a little bit of that shade Twist on the lower lash line as well, just to add like a nice pop of shimmer. I'm just going to apply liquid liner and mascara and then clean up a little bit of that fallout and I'll be right back. Okay, a few things to finish off the eye look. I just used the NYX Epic Ink Liner. I did mess up my eyeliner on both sides today. I tried to even it out, but this is as good as it's going to get. And then I used the Essence Lash Princess Curl and Volume Mascara. I was going to apply false lashes, but I feel like this does a good job and it makes my lashes look dramatic. So I'm happy with how they look. I did switch the lip color. So I'm wearing the ColourPop Lippy Pencil in the shade Ashton and then the Fenty Gloss Bomb Heat in the shade Hot Chocolate on top. So this palette does not have a light matte shadow, which I typically do use just to kind of highlight the brow bone. 
So I'm just using one from this Catrice palette. Oh, I need the mirror. I went a little bit low with that on accident. I'm just applying a little bit to my brow bone just to brighten things up. I've already tried to say this like four times and now I already have the shadow on here. So for the inner corner, I'm just going to take the shade Chill and place that right here to add a pop. I love a bright highlight right in the inner corner. Okay, so this is the final look. I feel like it came together in the end thanks to the shade Twist, which I applied all over the lid. I feel like that just tied everything together, kind of blended over any imperfections, and I like the final look, but I definitely have some thoughts on this palette. So I am going to use the rest of the shades before I upload this video. I'll pin a comment below letting you guys know how I think they perform compared to the other ones, but I used a lot of shadows in here. I still have this shade, which I think it's probably going to be pretty similar to this, just even softer. And then I have this pink one and these three warmer tones. So I'll do another look so I can try them out and keep you guys posted. But I will say that the matte shadows in here are very, very soft. They are incredibly powdery. You lose a lot of product as you dip your brush in. And I wouldn't even say that the deeper ones are a lot more pigmented than the lighter ones. They really all lack in pigment, which can be completely fine if that's what you're looking for. But if you're looking for shadows that have, you know, medium to strong pigmentation, these are not the matte shadows for you. They blend out pretty well with the exception of that deeper brown. This even looks a little bit patchy on the eyes. Like you can kind of tell around my crease, it doesn't look the most well blended. And I feel like there are just so many good brown shadows out there that that's not really acceptable for a high-end palette. I obviously have a lighter skin tone and a lot of the shadows were not super vibrant on my skin tone. So I think that is something important to note. If you have a deeper skin tone and you've tried this, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. I think it would be super helpful for anyone watching this video. The shimmers in this palette are really pretty. I definitely think they are softer, more subtle shimmers. A lot of them will probably be better as topper shadows rather than like a full intense opaque shadow. I know the shade I used today, Twist, definitely is going to look a lot better on top of a dark shadow. I mean, on its own, it will look pretty, but it's going to be a sheer wash of color. Same with this color because they swatch so similarly. And then same with this one. This one's kind of like a gold that shifts to a red. They all feel very similar. For $44, I'm kind of surprised at the quality of this palette. I feel like it could definitely be better. I think that Urban Decay's quality in their Naked palettes is a lot better than the quality in this one. And I wanted to love this one. I mean, you guys saw in the beginning, I said that it swatched really well. It looked really pretty, but I just feel like for this price point, I expect better quality. I expect a little bit more pigmentation. They don't have to be super intense, but like this shadow, you really couldn't even build it up to look like that on the eyes. And then this shadow didn't work very well. I think if you're looking for like a sheer wash of color, then you might enjoy this one. And I think Urban Decay's palettes do kind of appeal to the everyday consumer who doesn't typically wear a lot of color because their colorful shadows are a little bit more toned down. So I could see people enjoying this. As someone who reviews makeup and tries to help you make a good purchasing decision, I have to be honest and say that I don't think this is worth $44. $44 is a lot for this quality, in my personal opinion. I just think you could get similar shadows for a less expensive price point. So I went through my collection and I found other green palettes that were kind of similar. I have a lot of green eyeshadow palettes. This one is kind of like green mixed with neutrals, but I just pulled out three palettes that have green shades that I feel like are kind of close in case you already have these or you want some alternatives. All three of these palettes are from ColourPop, which was not on purpose. They're just the palettes that came the closest. So the first one is The Child from ColourPop. This one is a mainly green palette with two neutrals. Well, three neutrals if you count that white highlight shade. There are shades in here that come close. When I hold them side by side, they don't look like identical dupes, and I'm not sure there are any shades that match each other perfectly, but if you're looking for a green toned palette with a couple of neutrals, this one might be a great alternative. This one kind of surprised me, but they're pretty similar. This is the ColourPop Tinkerbell palette. This was actually one of my favorite palettes of 2021. I felt like the color story was so unique and interesting. And again, you get some really pretty greens in here. This is definitely more of a vibrant green palette. So if the Wild Greens palette is a little bit too toned down for you, this might be a great alternative because you get some brighter greens, you get some mint tones, and then you also get this shade, which is very intense. So I feel like it just kind of adds a lot of drama to the look if that's what you're going for. The last one I wanted to mention isn't really that similar, but if the mint tones in the Wild Greens palette are what are jumping out at you, then you might like Mint to be from ColourPop. This isn't ColourPop's best palette because I don't find that there's a ton of variation within this. You typically get the same look over and over because it doesn't go super dramatic, which is fine. But if you like mint toned green eyeshadows, this might be a better option and it's 
just more affordable. Obviously those palettes from ColourPop are missing the three really pretty like orangey warm tones in this palette, but there's a chance you probably have something very similar in your collection. If you have Naked Heat, you could pull that in. But those are just my initial thoughts on the palette. I'll keep testing it out and I'll definitely let you guys know if my thoughts change because that could happen. It's not likely. I mean, there are some good shadows in here. I think these three are going to be my favorite and even the shade Chill. But overall, you know, if I'm telling you my thoughts from a review standpoint, I just think the price point is too high for what you get. If you guys have tried this palette, I would love to hear your thoughts. So whether you love it or hate it, let us know how it worked for you. And if you have any good palette alternatives that have really fun green eyeshadows in them, please let us know in the comment section below. But I will see you guys very soon with a new video. Bye.